Bop began with jazz, but one afternoon somewhere on a sidewalk, maybe 1939, 1940, Dizzy Gillespie or Charlie Parker or Thelonious Monk was walking down past a men's clothing store on 42nd Street or South Main in L.A., and from the loudspeaker they suddenly heard a wild, impossible mistake in jazz that could only have been heard inside their own imaginary head, and that is a new art, Bop. The name derives from an accident. America was named after an Italian explorer, not after an Indian king. Lionel Hampton had made a record called Hey Bob, a Rebop, and everybody yelled it, and it was when Lionel would jump in the audience and wail his saxophone at everybody with sweat claps, jumping fools in the aisles, the drummer vastly booming and belaboring on the stage as the whole theater rocked. Sung by Helen Humes, it was a popular record and sold many copies around 1945 or 46. First everyone looked around, then it happened. Bop happened. The bird flew in. Mines went in. On the streets, thousands of new type hepcats in red shirts and some goatees and strange queer-looking cowboys from the west with boots and belts. And the girls began to disappear from the street somehow. You uh, no longer saw, as in the 30s, the wrangler walking with his doll in the honky-tonk. Now he was alone. Rebop. Bop came into being because the girls were leaving the guys and going off to be middle-class models or something. And Dizzy or Charlie or Thelonious was walking down the street, heard a noise, a sound, half Lester Young, half raw rainy fog that has that chest-shivering excitement of shack or track or empty lot, the sudden vast tiger head on the wood fence, rainy no-school Saturday morning dump yards, hey, and rushed off dancing. On the piano that night, Thelonious introduced the wooden off-key note to everybody's warm-up notes. Minton's Playhouse. Evening starts. Jam hours later. 10 p.m. Colored bar and hotel next door. One or two white visitors. Some from Columbia, some from nowhere, some from ships, some from Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, some from Europe. The strange note makes the trumpeter of the band lift an eyebrow. Dizzy is surprised for the first time that day. He puts the trumpet to lips and blows a wet blur. Hee-hee-ha, laughs Charlie Parker, bending down to slap his ankle. He puts his alto to his mouth and says, Didn't I tell you? With jazz of notes. Talking eloquent like great poets of foreign languages, singing in foreign countries with lyres by seas. And no one understands because the language isn't alive in the land yet. Bop is the language from America's inevitable Africa. Going is sounded like gong. Africa is the name of the flu and kick beat off to one side. The sudden squeak uninhibited that screams muffled at any moment from Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet. Do anything you want. Drawing the tune aside along another improvisation bridge with a reach-out tear of claws, like why be subtle and false. The band of 10 p.m. Mintons swings into action. Bird Parker, who is only 18 years old, has a crew cut of Africa, looks impossible, has perfect eyes and composures of a king when suddenly you stop and look at him in the subway and you can't believe that Bop is here to stay. Or modern music, call it what you will, that it is real and that Negroes in America are just like us. We must look at them understanding the exact racial counterpart of what the man is and figure it with histories and lost kings of immemorial tribes and jungle and fellaheen town and otherwise, and the sad mutts sleeping on old porches in Big Edinburgh woods, where just ninety years ago, old Roost come running, calling Maw through the fence he'd just deserted the Confederate army and was running home for Pone, and flies on watermelon porches, and educated judges in horn-rimmed glasses reading the Amsterdam news. And the band realized the goof of life that had made them be not only misplaced in the white nation, but misnoticed for what they really were. And the goof, they felt stirring and springing in their bellies. Suddenly Dizzy spats his lips tight drum together and drives a high screeching fantastic clear note that has everybody in the joint look up. And Bird, lips hanging dully to hear, is turning slowly in a circle waiting for Diz to swim through the wave of the tune in a toneless complicated wave of his own grim-like factories. And they tonal at any minute and the logic of the mad. The sock in his belly is sweet, the rock zonga monga bang. In white creamed afternoons of blue, the bird had leaned back dreamily in eternity as Dizzy outlined to him the importance of becoming Muslims in order to give a solid basis of race to their ceremony. Make that rug swing, mother. When you say race, bow your head and close your eyes. 
Give them a religion no Uncle Tom Baptist. Make them wearers of skull caps of respectable minarets in actual New York, picking hashi dates from their teeth. Give them new names with zonga sounds. Make it weird. Thelonious, he was so weird, he wandered the twilight streets of Harlem in winter with no hat on his hair, sweating, blowing fog. In his head he heard it all ringing. Often he heard whole choruses by Lester, or Bird, or Dizzy, or Bags. There was a strange English kid hanging around Mittens who stumbled along the sidewalk hearing Lester in his head. Hours of hundreds of developing choruses in regular beat all day, so in the subway no dissonance could crash against unalterable choruses and implacable bars. He erected in mind's foundation jazz. Now the tune they were playing was all the things you are. They slowed it down and dragged behind it a half-tempo dinosaur proportions, changed the placing of the note in the middle of the harmony to an outer, more precarious position, where also its sense of not belonging was enhanced by the general atonality produced with everyone exteriorizing the tune's harmony. The clonk of the millennial piano like anvils in Petrograd. Blow, said Diz, and Charlie Parker came in for a solo with a squeaky, innocent cry. Monk punched, anguished, nub fingers crawling at the keyboard to tear up foundations and guts of jazz from the big master box. To make Charlie Parker hear his cry and sigh to jar the orchestra into vibrations, to elicit gloom from the doom of the, the black piano. He stared down wild-eyed at his keys like a matador at the bull's head. Groan, drunken figures shaded in the weaving background, tottering. The boys didn't care, because on cold corners they stood, three backs to one another, facing all the winds, bent, lips don't care, miserable, cold, and broke, waiting like witch doctors, saying... Everything belongs to me because I am poor. Like 12th century monks high in winter belfries of the Gothic organ, they wild-eyed were listening to their own wild sound, which was heralding a new age of music that would eventually require symphonies, schools, centuries of technique, declines and falls of master ripe styles, the Dixieland of Lou Armstrong 16 in New Orleans and the Big Pops Forest, Jim in the white shirt wailing at a big scarred base in raunchy Nongri, New Orleans, on South Rampart Street, famous for parades in Old Perdido Street. All that was mud in the river, Mississippi. Pasts of 1910 gold rings, derby hats of workers. Soon enough it would leap and fill the gay 20s like champagne in a glass. Pop! And crawl up to the 30s with tired Rudy Valleys lamenting what Louis had laughed in a 20s transoceanic jazz. Sick and tired early Ethel Mermans and old beat bedsprings creaking in that stormy weather blues when people lay in bed all day and moaned and had it good. The world of the United States was tired of being poor and low and gloomy in a line. Swing erupted as the depression began to crack. It was the year marijuana was made illegal, 1937. Young teenagers took to the first restraint, the second, the third, some still wandered on hobo trains. Lost boys of the 30s numbered in the hundreds of thousands. Salvation armies put up full houses every night, and some were 10 years old. Teenagers alienated from their parents who have suddenly returned to work and for good to get rid of that damn old mud of the river and tear the rose vine off the porch and paint the porch white and cut the trees down and castrate the hedges, burn the leaves, build a wire fence, get up an antenna, listen. The alienated teenager in the 20th century finally ripe, gone wild, modern to be rich and prosperous, no more just around the corner, became the hepcat, the jitterbug, and smoked the new law weed. World War II gave everybody two pats of butter in the morning on a service tray, including your sister. Up from tired, degrading swing, wondering what had happened between 37 and 45, and because the army would worked it, canned it, played it to the boys in North Africa, Enraged it into Piccadilly bars, and the Andrews sisters put the corn on the can. Swing with its heroes died. And Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and Thelonious Monk, who were hustled through the chow lines, came back remembering old goofs, and tried it again, and zop! Dizzy screamed, Charlie squealed, Monk crashed, the drummer kicked, the bass question mark plunked, and off they wailed on salt peanuts, jumping like mad monkeys in the gray new air. Hey, pork pie, pork pie, hey, pork pie. Skiddle, little stoop, sop dee up, sop dee up. They came to their own, they jumped, they had jazz and took it in their hands and saw its history, vicissitudes, and developments and turned it to their weighty use 
and heavily carried it clanking like posts across the enormity of a new world philosophy and a new strange and crazy grace came over them. Fell from the air free. They saw pity in the whole of heaven, hell in their hearts. Billy Holiday had rocks in her heart. Lester droopy pork pied hung his horn and blew bop lazy ideas inside jazz at everybody dreaming. Miles Davis leaning against the piano, fingering his trumpet with a cigarette hand working, making raw iron sound like wood speaking in long sentences like Marcel Proust. Hey, Jim. And the stud comes swinging down the street and says he's real bent and he is down and he has a twisted face. He works, he wails, he bops, he bangs. This man who was sent stoned and stabbed is now down, bent, and stretched out. He is home at last. His music is here to say. His history has washed over us. His imperialistic kingdoms are coming.